So Mark chapter 14, verse 32, we're taking it slow so we can learn the Bible. We come to the final night of Jesus before his crucifixion. We've had the Lord's Supper in the upper room. They came to a place which is named Gethsemane. Now, Gethsemane means wine grass. Now, you run back up to verse 26 of 14. It says there, the Mount of Olives. So, wine grass and Mount of Olives, they're vineyards. And another place calls it a garden. We're going to the very same spot where Adam and Eve sinned against Jehovah. We're going back to the original place where sin happened. Where Jesus is meeting with his disciples. Gethsemane, again, means oil press, wine press. He said to his disciples, sit ye here while I shall pray. And he taketh with him Peter, James, and John, there's the three, and began to be sore amazed and to be very heavy. They just had a, a big meal. They just had the Lord's Supper. I don't know, have you ever Thanksgiving? Ever have a big meal and afterwards you just want to, you're sitting down you and you're falling asleep. You want to fall asleep. You're tired. And says unto him, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful unto death. Tarry ye here and what? Now, unto death is to show that when we look at that cup, we're not talking about death. Unto death. Everything that happens before the death of Jesus. Because Jesus knows he's going to die. He knows he's going to lay in that tomb for three days and night. He knows he's going off into hell. He knows he's coming out of that tomb victorious. Why would he be afraid of death? It's not going to keep him and he knows it. And he went forth forward a little and fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible the hour might pass from him. So what Jesus is praying according to Mark is Father This is, this is really a hard thing. Father, hurry up and get this done. And I don't know how you can say Jesus, hurry up, Jesus being God, but you got here is Jesus 100% in the flesh. 100% God, but Jesus 100% man and 100% God. Knowing as God what is going to happen to him. But in the flesh, Jesus is going to have the ultimate pain that no human has ever had, will have. And he's going to step into hell. 
And he's going to suffer for our sins. He's like, Father. And he said, Abba, Father, which is, a, which is his father. All things are possible unto thee. Look, look, father, you can do anything. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will. Look at that. What's Jesus' will? What does Jesus want? But thy will. Now go back to verse 35. What is the will of Jesus? I'm going to be careful. I'm going to walk very, very softly in the ground. And possibly, hurry up, let's get this done. Or possibly, let's not do it at all. But nevertheless, thou will. Well, what's the Father want? You, you got to suffer. If you're going to redeem those human, human beings, you better suffer. You better put through all ultimate tortures. You better die. You better go to hell if you're going to suffer for them. Now look at what Jesus, 100% man, is looking at. The Bible says he endured the cross. So, this cup, even the Schofield note will say this cup is Jesus is afraid, scared of death. That's not the biblical cup. Psalm 75. Psalm 75. My journey of your church in School Baptist Church is going to preach opposite of what I'm preaching. Because they don't study the scriptures. Okay, Mark 14, one night, we're done. Yay! Mark 15 next week. And with Mark 15 next week, we're going to have chicken and we're going to have stuffing and we're going to have, you know, bring your own meal next week. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're going to have a fellowship. All right. Hurry up. Hurry up. We're going to do Mark 15 in 15 minutes because we got, we got fellowship. We got food. I was in a church. You know, we went through the whole entire Bible, chapter by chapter, and you skip the chapters. He went through the chapters a microsecond, but look at Psalm 75, verse 8. For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup. Now we're looking at the cup. In the hand of the Lord, Jehovah, there is a cup. And the wine is red. Sound familiar? And it's full of mixture. And he pours out the same, but the dregs thereof, the, left, the, the, the settlement. All the wicked of the earth shall wring them out and drink it. So here is something not just Jesus is going to take, but there are wicked people going to partake of the cup. Isaiah 51. Isaiah 51, verse 7, I hope. That does not look right. See if we're going wrong. Isaiah. I'm trying to see my. Lack of vision. Um, no, 51. Back to 51, hopefully. I apologize, my vision is. Oops. 
And let me try this. Seven. When I write, I can't read. Oh. All right. I deeply apologize. Let's try 49. One more place in Isaiah 49. And when your vision starts going, all right, let's take Revelation. I apologize deeply. Revelation 17, I hope. <laughs> Revelation 17, 4, talk about the cup. I apologize for that. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones. And if you study the Bible, a lot of people point this to the Roman Catholic Church and pearls. Having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations, filthiness, and her fornication. That's not a good cup. Now let's look at that cup for a moment. As that fact, you got holy Jesus. 33 and a half years, no sin. All eternity, no sin. Now, witness the fall of Lucifer and a third of the angels. Jesus, 33 and a half years, will see sin, but he had no sin. Back to Mark 14. And we got to take this serious. We got to take this very serious. There's no laughing matter now. What is it with Jesus? The very fact that say with Jesus, he took my sins, and I'm not going to tell you what my sins are. But in order to go to that cross, he has to become a murderer. He has to become a rapist. He has to become a sodomite. He's got to be a blasphemer. He's got to be all the sins. From Adam and beyond. And I don't know if they had drag queens back then. I don't know if they had people who say, well, I don't know what sex I am. So I'll say even beyond. And whoever is vile. He dealt with a woman one time and she was in her ages. She was humped over. She was this little old lady using grandma. And we talked to her about Jesus. And she said, I don't think God could ever forgive the sins I've done. And you got to look at that old lady and say, my God, what'd you do? Because your face doesn't bear it. The very fact of all the sins of humanity is coming up for him to be on that cross. The moment Eli, Eli, Lama Sevectia, he becomes sin and God turns his back. Why have thou forsaken me? Because you took on the sins of man. Jesus does not know what it would be like to have his father forsaken and go into hell. Death, that's no problem for Jesus. That is no problem at all. Three days, I'm coming out. How many times did he preach that? And he cometh, verse 37, and finds them asleep. Well, what's humanity, what's humanity do 
when you preach the gospel, they fall asleep. They rag on you. They make fun of you. They ignore it. They don't listen. They die and go to hell. They ignore it. That's, that's what the three decided. Peter, James, and John. They're asleep. The three main disciples. Father, this cup of violence, this cup of this wickedness is coming upon me. I got to drink it. Father, help me. He goes back. And the devil is whispering in Peter, James, and John. Stay asleep. Go to your sleep. Go to your sleep. I'm trying to defer Jesus. Go to sleep. What do you think about that? The devil is working on Jesus. And his three disciples that go to sleep. You know how important it is Jesus going to that cross? Go to sleep. And he says unto Peter, Simon, Simon, Simon's not his new name. Peter was. Simon, sleepest thou? Could not thou watch one hour? Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer. In bed sleeping with no care. There's just there's just sweet hour of prayer. Let me ask you, Christian. Have you ever prayed for an hour? I have. How dare you sing a hymn, Sweet Hour of Prayer, and you never pray in an hour? You don't understand what Jesus went through. And they turn around, the three main disciples are asleep. Even John. Watch ye and pray. Least he enter into temp temptation. The spirit truly is ready. But the flesh is weak. And he went away and prayed and spake the same words to the father. And we returned, he found them asleep again. For their eyes were heavy, they are sleepy. Neither wished they what to answer. Them. What, what are you guys doing? <laughs> I'm praying to the Father. You're asleep. And he cometh the third time and says unto them, Now this I don't understand. I got a question mark everywhere this shows up. Sleep on now. Take your rest. It's enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hand of sinners. Judas is on his way. Now he says, sleep on now, take the rest. Rise up, let us go. I don't understand that. How do you sleep on now and take your rest, but rise up and let us go? That's like saying, all right, go sleep. Okay, good night, see you. All right, get up, let's go. What? What? <laughs> what? Morning already? But what's going on? And we'll pick up where Judas steps in. Matthew 26. Matthew 26. Verse 36. Then cometh Jesus with them unto the place called Gethsemane. It says to the disciples, sit ye here while I go and pray none to sit. 
he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, James and John, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. And said to him, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch, watch with me. You know what the problem with the Laodicean church age? It's not watching. It's asleep. It's asleep with adultery or fornication with Satan. Satan is in your inside your church building. Amen in the preacher. You have come into the world. All are welcome. How many goldfish can our, our youth pastors swallow? What kind of colorful event thing that we can outdo the VBS down the street? Let the kids learn scripture so they can get a tootsie roll or get a whistle or whatever surprise, but not learn scripture for the father. Next week, if you can get a kazoo, if you can if you can do the scripture, and the kid goes goes home, learns the scripture, not for the father, but for the kazoo. And that's gonna end because the parents get upset and, and, and get bothered by the sound of the kazoo all day. Don't you do that again? All right, we get and he went a little further. <laughs> he didn't go far. And fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, capital F, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. The cup, let the cup go away. Father, you don't know what sin is. Father, it's disgusting. What my eyeballs have seen. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. Jesus has a different will from the Father in the flesh as he's praying. You know, when we pray, you know, we may have a whole total different will from the Father when we ask God to do something. And what we may be asking God may be totally out of the range of what God wants. And then we say, as thou will. <laughs> and he cometh unto the disciples and finds them asleep and said unto Peter, what? Look at what? Could you not watch with me one hour? What? Look at that statement on the sarcasm. What? Couldn't, you couldn't want one hour? How come you're asleep, Peter? How come you're not on your knees praying? Peter's at a prayer meter, meeting and he's not praying. Watch again. Watch and pray. He said in verse 38, watch. Verse 41, he says, watch and pray. You know what your pastor will be doing midweek service? Watch and pray. You know how many churches I've been in midweek service? Oh, okay. You got a prayer request. You got a prayer request. You got a prayer request. Hey, Father, you, 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 that person over there. Lord, Father, over here, this person. Father, Mary over here. Father. Okay, we're done. Open up your Bibles to Isaiah or whatever book. When I was first saved, the first churches I've ever been in is we, we took a prayer request. The pastor said, pray for this person. And we got down on our knees. We had no piano. We had no lesson. We got down on our prayer, and there would be people who would, who would speak to God aloud in prayer. And then you would have a 15-minute lesson. Tops. That's when I was first saying, 1987. And you had a prayer book. I don't mean a Catholic prayer book. I mean, you write this name down, and you, and then you know what that turned to? Did you hear 
this fifth that got marriage problems? Because she said, pray for me and my husband. The Williams family, they got trouble with their children. They said, pray for Billy. You turn into a blah, 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 blah. And the churches today don't even have prayer meetings. And they say, well, pray for Mary, pray for Jean. And you don't even know who the people are. I, I was one time in prayer. And I said, Pastor, I said, I said, what happened to this person? I said, don't tell me. what. I just want to know. Are they okay? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? How about this guy in the hospital? I don't know. What? You didn't go? No, I, was not, I don't do that. Okay. You're not a pastor. He says, watch and pray, verse 41, that ye enter not into temptation. That's what the church is into. The church is in temptation because they're not watching for Jesus and they're not praying to the Father. The Spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went again the second time and prayed and said, Oh, my Father, if this cup may not pass away from me. So he does not want that cup. Except I drink it. Thy will be done. He's got to drink it. What if the Father allowed the prayer of Jesus? Okay, son, whatever you want to do. And Jesus got up, found him asleep, and said, okay, I'm done. I'm, Father, I'm coming back. If I can't even have the three closest disciples, it ain't worth it. Imagine what Satan is whispering to the ears of Jesus. You're going to die for them? Out of an entire nation, you have nobody on your side right now. And he came and found them asleep again for, yes, their eyes were heavy. And he left them, went again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciples and said unto him, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand. The Son of Man is betrayed in the hand of sinners, Judas. All right, sleep on now, take your rest, arise, let us be. I don't know what that means. Behold, he is at hand. That does betray. Judas is going to walk up to him at any moment. Now remember, it's also dark in the middle of the night. You don't have street lights and you don't have porch lights. You probably got flaming torches or things like that, maybe lanterns. Luke 22. Gospel, Luke 22, verse 39. I mean, from this point on, there's agony everywhere. His disciples are not with him. Yet they're, they're there. He's going to be betrayed. He's going to be beaten. He's going to be harassed. He's going to be spitted upon. He's going to be whipped. He's going to be crowned with thorns. And you worry about because they made they made fun of you. He came out and went as he went to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said unto him, pray that you enter not into temptation. Look at that, right away. Luke says, he was drawn from about a stone's cast. He didn't go far. He had to take a stone, just cast it. He knelt down and prayed. I know another place says he fell Listen, he's an apostle of kneeling. He's an apostle laying down. He's in every posture there is 
to pray to the Father three times. Each of them 60 minutes. My jury of the Christians today would not know. Because they never even prayed past. Lord, thank you for this meal for the honor of my stomach. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, Jesus, please let all seven numbers appear on the screen so I can win the million. And I'll give most of it to the church. <laughs> Saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. What, what, what are you doing? Remove? Here I got I got a sprayer here. Hey, somebody come take away this sprayer and it's gone. <laughs> Nevertheless. Not my will. My will is get rid of it. But thine. Be done. Father, for this point in time I have come. And it's not pleasant what you want me to do. Sound familiar? I'd rather not do it, but because you want me to do it. Sound familiar? And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven. Strengthen him. You know you can do it. Father loves you. Remember three days and three nights. You're coming up. Forty days after that. You'll be at the right hand of the father. And at that point, they say angels are messengers. There's no message. The angel comes down and maybe has some food, I don't know, or whatever it is. Maybe just comes down and puts his arm around Jesus' back and patting his back. Sometimes the best thing you can do for another Christian is keep your big mouth shut and just put your arm around him. Oh, I know how you feel. Oh, really? Did your spouse die? Oh, no. Then shut up. Oh, I know how you feel. Uh, did you have a child die? No. Shut up. You know, you know if I were, you know, did you have a divorce? No. Then shut up. It doesn't say anything about that angel opening his mouth. But he strengthened him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. So he, his prayer gets serious. I don't know what posture he was, but he's in a different posture right now. There's the angel, and Jesus gets more the earnest. And sweat was as it were great drops of blood, which science says, medication, medical doc, doctor feels says, this is agony. Your pores have been opened up and loud blood. When did the blood of God start spilling? When he was in the garden. And his blood was spattered upon the, the office or the bean of the place where the Sanhedrin was. And where the Romans whipped him, where the Romans put the crown of thorns on him, and the purple robe that the Romans put on him, and his own garment, and as they head him off to Calvary, the blood of God is dripping, is flowing for our sins.
God's blood has begun to flow in the garden during prayer. Are you really praying for someone who's lost? Earnest. Agony. And when he rose up from prayer and was come to disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow. Whose sorrow? His sorrow. What is really? And can you just see Satan whispering, in his ear, really worth it, isn't it, Jesus? I told them to watch and pray. You know why they weren't praying and watching but sleeping? Because every time Jesus told them he was going to suffer, he's going to die. Jesus, yeah, who's the greatest among us? Jesus, who will sit at the right hand of your seat? He said to him, why sleep ye? Rise and pray. He see enter in temptation while he spake in the multitude, and here comes Judas. Luke doesn't say anything about rest and John, Gospel of John. 18. And when Jesus has spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples unto the book Sidron. And you probably had different names. How do you pronounce them? Where was a garden? Oh, there's a garden. There's a, there's a brook there. Unto which he entered and his disciples. There's a brook. And if you go back. And read Genesis chapter 2. In the garden there was a river. Now, I'm not going to point out, but I'm, let me just look at it like this. Jesus is in the garden. There's a brook. It's Jesus, Peter, James, and John. In the garden, there was Jehovah. There was the serpent. There was Adam. And it was Eve. Adam and Eve did not pay attention. And the serpent's like. <laughs> In the end state of Genesis chapter 2. It took Jehovah. Now get this. It takes Jehovah to slay a lamb that Adam and Eve might be dressed. Because fig leaves didn't do the job. You know what happened with fig leaves with Jesus? He cursed that tree. So no fruit. Let no man eat from hence. Adam and Eve come walking up with their fig leaf aprons. They ain't going to do it. Why are you guys so guilty? Here is the blood of the Lamb which take away the sin of the world. Now can you just see the Lamb of God? Can you see the angel of the Lord standing before Adam and Eve slaying that Lamb and looking at the Father? And one day, Father, 
And at this moment now, he's in the garden. He's got three of his disciples. He sees lies. He sees fornication. He sees divorce. He sees sexual sins. He sees drunkenness. He sees custom. He sees he sees it all. And not even all. And God's intent of what man has got himself into, Father. Oh my Father. And you know what man would say? Oh my God. Now he can't say, Oh my God, because God is not Jesus God. It's his Father. Oh my Father. This is disgusting. Father, John 11. I know he didn't say John 11, but Father, John 11. Do you know? Do you know? When your best friend dies, think of think of Abraham, Father. When, when Abraham died, you never cried. Like I cried over Lazarus. Father. We get people that pray to us all the time, yes. But they're not there like that woman prayed. That woman that prayed for her child, the, the, the Greek Phoenician woman. She's not Jewish. Oh, my Lord. And now that Jesus is in the flesh, he's got the God side of him, 100% God. And now he knows what man feel 100% man. And he's on the way to the cross. Because of man. Because of man. Because of me. I'm not going to tell you all my sins, but they're all under the blood. I'm cleansed. Because Jesus said one day to the Father, do you know how wicked and vile style Hayward is? Father, if I really passed this cup. I was like, hey, we love him. There's no other way, son. You got to go and suffer and die. Let me send an angel down. You know what the hardest thing also is? Jesus knows. Who's going to reject him and die and go off in eternity into the devil's hell forever? Despite the fact is that Jesus is going to do it all for man to be saved. Imagine how Jesus feels on how America has turned her back on him. We used to be, we were a Christian nation. Man, look look at the filth we got today. I guarantee the inhabitants of Sodom and Gomorrah is going to judge this nation. And they're not even going to believe how wicked we are. Imagine Lot being called up to judge this nation. 